Thank you for calling the European style Cecil Hotel, the best affordable hotel. We begin with a disturbing development in the search for a young Vancouver woman in Los Angeles. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, Elisa Lamb? 21 year old Elisa Lamb was last seen nearly three weeks ago at the hotel. Surveillance video from the hotel's elevators show her acting unusual, as if she's hiding from someone. Then, Lamb disappeared January 31st. There was something wrong. The, the pressure in the water was terrible. The shower was awful. The hotel's maintenance man responding to guest complaints went to check the four rooftop tanks that feed the building's main water supply. On the 19th of February, her body was found in the water tank up on the roof. It made me feel really sick yesterday and until now, knowing that we've been drinking this water for eight days. As hundreds of hotel guests unknowingly continue to drink and use the water. And now this, the decomposing body of a Canadian tourist found in one of the hotel's water tanks. Guests here were noticeably upset. If there was a dead body in the water you were using and drinking? On the 19th of February, her body was found in the water tank up on the roof. I mean, it, as a paranormal investigator, it doesn't get any bigger and more sinister than this. And there's a reason why this hotel has inspired other horror productions like American Horror Story Hotel. Yes. When you walk into that building, it's like you cannot even control your own mind. You may remember seeing this viral video where she was seen acting erratically in the hotel's elevator. Elisa Lamb was found in this water tank and they couldn't explain how she got in it, how the lid was put back on the water tank. 100%. So there's no way she could have gotten in there and then closed the lid. But not only that, but her clothes were found floating at the bottom of the tank. It's kind of, it's kind of odd, the whole damn thing. We didn't know about the reputation of the hotel. I was just reasoning that it was cheap. You know, we didn't pay loads of money, so you get what you pay for. The Cecil Hotel is best known for its infamy. Founded in the 1920s, the hotel sits in downtown Los Angeles, just a stone's throw from Skid Row. The neighborhood around the Cecil has changed over the decades, but despite the city's best efforts to gentrify it, the hotel remains a symbol of the area's dark past. It advertises itself as a beautiful, vintage, European-style hotel, catering to young international travelers, like Lisa Lamb from Vancouver, Canada. Her body found in one of the hotel's four water towers that feeds into the hotel's taps. She may have been there for weeks. After a few days of um, staying in that hotel, we realized, yes, it was... Um, Oh, what's the word? I can't think of a word. It was horrendous. It was horrendous, but yeah. About five days into the holiday, things got worse from that point on, really. I was struggling to sleep. We noticed um, that the water pressure was very low. You turn the tap on, just, why is the pressure blocked? Why is there no water pressure? And the water was quite discolored. It was, it was like a... Uh, a dark color, like a, it had like a brown tint to it. We were brushing our teeth using that water. We were showering in that water. Uh, we did um, drink the water, but it did have a funny taste to it. We complained and moved to a different room, two floors up. The water pressure never got better. The receptionist told us that they will ask maintenance guys to come and get it looked at. There was a complaint about the water pressure, so I asked maintenance to check for possible clogs, you know, see if everything's okay. Siempre tenía que andar checando uno, alguna cosa que hubiera malo. Mantenimiento de 24 horas, de día y de noche. Entonces dije yo, pues, okay, voy a averiguarle. 
y le abría la llave y se hacía. Le iba a, donde se abre hace ruido. Entonces me, me, le dije, le conté al otro mi, mi compañero que le, hay un problema. So right now we're asking your help to see if anyone recognizes 21-year-old Elisa Lamb. Her worried parents flew in from Vancouver, British Columbia, and stood behind LAPD detectives who described Lamb's disappearance as suspicious and may suggest foul play. She was in regular contact with her parents and uh, up until five days ago, five, six days ago. The Canadian tourist was traveling alone. On January 28th, after a visit to San Diego, Lamb checked into this upscale youth hostel, part of the Cecil Hotel on Main Street in downtown LA. According to the hotel manager, the woman was booked for four nights. Lamb was last seen in the lobby in the late hours of the 31st. The last people to see her were the uh, staff at the hotel, and, uh, and that's it. And according to hotel employees, nothing seems suspicious. However, Lamb, who was supposed to check out the next morning, never did. When detectives were asked about her cell phone and other belongings. I don't want to talk about the cell phone right now very much. Uh, we have some of her property. According to investigators, the woman has no history of this kind of behavior. Police hope by releasing her picture, it will generate leads into where this young woman might be. We're seeking to get this photo out so we can uh, find Elisa. En el techo hay cuatro tanques. Me imaginé que no había agua en el tanque, que se había tapado el principal tanque, donde el agua empieza a circular, va. Por eso voy a ver. El techo hay otras escaleritas para ver de llegar a los tanques. Y el tanque tenía una puerta. Y yo, yo cuando hice a ver. A... Ahí cuando. Uh Nearly three weeks after Elisa Lam went missing, a body has been found in a water tank on the roof of her hotel. Grim discovery at a downtown LA hotel. Police now believe the body found inside a rooftop water tank is that of a tourist who disappeared three weeks ago. Official identification has not yet been made, but police say the victim is most likely Elisa Lam, a Canadian tourist who was last seen at the Cecil Hotel on January 31st. Shortly after 10 a.m., the body was found by a hotel employee following complaints of low water pressure in the building. After guests were informed, they were understandably shaken. The pressure in the water was terrible. The shower was awful. The water, and when you turned the tap on, the water was coming black first. Wouldn't you be if, if there was a dead body in the water you were using? And the hotel is having them sign waivers saying, yeah, you can stay here at the hotel, but it's mm. not our fault if anything happens to you. We do want to add, Fred, that uh, we did call the Department of Public Health. Mm. The Public Health Department is thoroughly testing the water now. It's kind of, it's kind of odd, the whole damn thing. Fire officials say there is no danger to hotel guests who were exposed to the water. Elisa Lamb was said to be traveling to Santa Cruz before she disappeared. Police have not said whether they suspect foul play, but the Cecil Hotel is being treated as a crime scene tonight. So at this point, it's the coroner's case until the person's identified and we know the cause of death. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, Elisa Lamb. Elisa Lamb was a 21-year-old student from Canada. Uh, she came down here on a vacation. 21-year-old Elisa Lamb was last seen nearly three weeks ago at the hotel. 
Surveillance video from the hotel's elevators show her acting unusual, as if she's hiding from someone. Then, Lamb disappeared January 31st. The boss never saw Lamb, but knew something at their hotel was off. There was something wrong. The, the pressure in the water was terrible. The shower was awful. The hotel's maintenance man responding to guest complaints went to check the four rooftop tanks that feed the building's main water supply. On the 19th of February, her body was found in the water tank up on the roof. It made me feel really sick yesterday and until now, knowing that we've been drinking this water for eight days. It was a huge story at the time, and there were many uh, suggestions and theories as to how she got up there, why she was up there, what happened, and that continues to today. I cannot rack my brain around, around how she died. I mean, when you watch that elevator footage, is she talking to somebody else? Was there somebody involved in her death? February 2013, an autopsy is performed. On June 15th, Elisa's death is marked as an accident on the coroner's report. Three days later on the 18th, it is abruptly changed to could not be determined. Before the report is released to the public, it is once again changed back to the original finding. Elisa Lamb's death is ruled as an accident. So much mystery surrounding it, you can't help but introduce the theory of what has made this hotel have one of the darkest reputations, and that's the hauntings. Yeah. This is the elevator that she was on. Here's a still that I took of the elevator footage, and I'm trying to know exactly what floor she was on by matching up patterns in the background here in the wall. This is my first steps inside of the actual elevator that Elisa Lamb was on. This is the exact location where Elisa was standing. Does that line up? Yeah, this is it. The security cameras right there that captured this. So in this footage, you can see Elisa Lamb in this corner. She was like hiding from somebody. She then stepped out. She looked both ways like this. She went back into the elevator. These are the buttons that she was pushing nonstop. What was she doing? Who was she hiding from right here? Who was she talking to out here? She was standing here. She had weird hand movements right here. Her fingers were spread apart. She was moving in weird ways. What happened to you? What do you think people imagine when they picture the manager of the Cecil Hotel? It wasn't even the first couple days in the job where the maintenance manager said that we had a problem. And I said, what do you mean? One of the um, guests died at the hotel. It was hard to process. Before working at the hotel, I mean, I'd never had any experience with a dead body or a coroner. That was like a real eye-opener for me. Come to find out, well, you know, this happens all the time. 
the maintenance manager. He walked me through the entire hotel. Along the way, you know, he would just point and say, someone died here, someone died there. Murders. At one point, I think I just asked him, is there a room here that like, maybe somebody hasn't died in? I never got used to that. Okay, so we are on the fourth floor. Uh, I have Patrick with me. Patrick used to uh, work uh, as a crime scene photographer for the LAPD. Patrick, you stayed in Elisa Lamb's room, correct? I did, yes. Okay. Uh, we are, for the very first time, going to go to room 412, which was Elisa Lamb's room. Elisa originally shared a room with roommates, but they complained about Elisa's strange behavior, forcing her to move into this room alone. What happened to you in here? I felt something on my neck, you know, choking me, and I, I panicked. Did you I, feel was, hands around I you? did, I felt something like this, and, you know, against my esophagus, yeah. like here, and it's like, and then I couldn't move, you know, it's like paralysis where you're, I, you know, it's, it was a very, very disturbing feeling because you're, you're helpless, you can't do anything. Could the entity that attempted to harm Patrick be the same entity that many people speculate may have influenced Elisa Lamb on the day of her tragic death? I would say there are a lot of like unique challenges when you are running a hotel like the Cecil. A lot came with the place. Many serial killers called the Cecil Hotel their home away from home, such as Richard Ramirez and Jack Unterweger. Richard Ramirez lived at the Cecil Hotel on the 14th floor for a while. He loved the Cecil Hotel so much, Ramirez considered it his home. In 1985, it was the choice hideout for serial killer Richard Ramirez, convicted of killing at least 13 people throughout Los Angeles. Ramirez reportedly lived at the hotel for months. Guests have witnessed seeing Richard walk into the lobby freshly covered in his victim's blood. It was such a regular occurrence that hotel guests would mind their business and leave Ramirez alone. Why did you kill those people? Uh, no comments. No comments. I, I cannot answer that at this time. What was Richard's motive? To kill. That's it? To kill. They are desires, whereas if, where if I didn't give in to them, I would be crushed by them. I believe in the, in the evil in human nature. This is a wicked, wicked world. And uh, in a wicked world, you, wicked people are born. I'm not going to blame society or anything. Uh, it is up to the individual like myself uh, to to keep on knocking on, on whatever door they want to get into. As far as Satan is concerned, I, I believe in you know, a malevolent being. Uh, his description eludes me, but I, I have felt powers that are evil. An Austrian serial killer also found comfort at the Cecil. Jack Underweger may have even killed some of his prostitute victims there serial killer Jack Unterweger who preyed on prostitutes some just blocks away from the Cecil. Everyone who comes here with hopes and dreams and stars in their eyes, uh, it's, it's the noir side of the city. In the summer of 1990, Unterweger visited LAPD headquarters. And I'm a journalist and I am interested... He strolled into the public relations office, presented his press credentials and signed up for the ride-along program. And the Austrian police this program allows civilians to tag along with police in their cruisers as they patrol the city. Tonight at 8.30 As all Jack's credentials were in order, the request was accepted. Jack? Jack? Unterweger. Unterweger claimed he was writing a German magazine story, contrasting American and European prostitution. He asked to be shown where the city's prostitutes hung out. The officers introduced him to the seedier areas of Los Angeles. Detective Jim Harper explains. I mean, if you come to a city as big as Los Angeles, you know, prostitutes don't hang out everywhere. You gotta, you gotta know where they hang out. What better way to do that than get a ride along with the police department? 
Witnesses last saw 21-year-old Shannon Exley in the vicinity of 7th Street and Main Street. She had been working the streets since she'd run away from home at 16. Her life ended on June 20th, 1991. Her nude body was found with her bra wrapped around her neck. Marks on her feet told investigators she had already been strangled when she was dragged some 50 feet to where she was found. Ten days later, investigators discovered a second prostitute, Irene Rodriguez. She was found behind a tractor trailer, only a mile and a half from where Exley's body had been dumped. Both women had been strangled with their bra, and both were last seen in the vicinity of 7th and Main Street. The detectives discovered that Unterweger was living nearby. We learned that he stayed at the Cecil Hotel, which is located at 643 South Main, which is right on the corner of 7th and Main Street, and that's the location where close proximity where both our victims were last seen. A third victim, Sherry Long, was found near Malibu less than two weeks later. Once again, Unterweger was staying at a hotel in the vicinity Long was last seen. Around her neck, her bra was tied tightly. Detective Jim Harper remembers the unique method of strangulation. The way the bras were tied around their neck was nothing that I had seen before. Look, somebody took a lot of intricate time to, to really take time with the victim and, and put it around their necks and tie it. In order for the knots to be made, the wearing apparel had to be dismantled in some form. It's not like the bras were just taken and tied in a square knot, but they were stripped of the elastic always on the left side. And if three people randomly went out and strangled three people, it is extremely unlikely that all three of them would come up with this same scenario. Another famous guest at the Cecil was Elizabeth Short, also known as a Black Dahlia. It's even rumored that the actress known as Black Dahlia hung out in the hotel before her brutal murder in 1947. Elizabeth Short stayed at the Cecil Hotel before she was found mutilated into pieces near the Biltmore Hotel, where she was last seen. 